Welcome to Rants and Rabbit Trails. I'm your host, Morgan. And I'm your host, Pearl. And if you hear any noises in the background, we're joined today by Peanut, the podcast puppy. Your child. My child. My firstborn. I love her. She is kind of whiny right now because she's a princess, but hopefully she'll chill out. (laughs) Anyway, thanks for joining us today on this fine day. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing fantastic. Today we have a few Glitch in the Matrix stories from Reddit for you. At least all mine are from Reddit. I don't know. Same. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, Reddit Glitch in the Matrix stories. I have been excited for this one. I love Glitch in the Matrix stories. They are kind of akin to, like, ghost stories or just creepy, like, unsettling. Yeah, oh, yeah, I love it. My fave. The so. Truman Show things of life that just make you question everything. Exactly. How would you describe a glitch in the matrix if nobody knows? I'm going to pull up um, Urban Dictionary. I would describe it as something... Oh, God. It can be so many different types of things, but just something that happens in your life that, like, there's no logical explanation for it. Yeah. It feels like you're tripping balls. (laughs) Yeah. So the Urban Dictionary says, obviously it's from The Matrix. If you don't know what The Matrix is, then do you live under a rock? But it's it's like experiencing deja vu um, and or an explanation for an unlikely or irregular occurrence. So like from The Matrix... An example is uh, Neo identified a glitch in the Matrix when he saw the same black cat walk past the door twice. So it's like, this wasn't here before, where did it go? Or this was literally right here, where did it go? Or like, my cat is all of a sudden outside when I never let them outside. Things like that. It's like, I have no idea how that could have happened. Yeah, a big thing on Reddit is like, people post their thing And then people comment and try and, I don't know, rationalize, give Mm -hmm. suggestions for what might have happened. It's kind of like with ghost hunting, where there's a lot of people who are there to try and debunk. Try and, or like give, you know, if your area of expertise is whatever, like, oh, I think this could have been right this sort of thing, or like scientific explanation or whatever, whereas if somebody wasn't a pro in that, they... Be like, I have no idea how to explain that. Maybe it was explainable or maybe it wasn't. But um, yeah, people will comment and be like, what the fuck? Or try to explain things. But reading the comments is really fun. It is very, very fun. Um, It varies so much. Like the severity of the glitch. Yeah. Like my first one that I have is about bananas. Banana. But there were some that I saw that I was like, that would give me such an existential crisis yeah oh my gosh do you want me to start yeah i have six okay so um the first one i have is from reddit user sarah x 11 this will probably get buried when i was around 20 a few years ago i kept having dreams about a woman with long black hair named aurora They were different dreams, but for some reason, her distinct face and name always ended up in them. It got to a point where I would wake up frustrated and confused, trying to Google her name or find out how I was connected to her. After a few months, she stopped showing up and I dismissed it, thinking my brain was just being a scumbag. (laughs) Fast forward a few years later, Halloween 2009, I'm in the car with a friend stopped at a gas station. I'm about to pull out and merge onto a highway when I get a phone call from a random number, so I stopped the car, but no one answered. There was a person behind me who grew impatient, honked at me, and then swerved in front of me instead of waiting for two seconds for me to move. The second they get on the highway, some silver Civic loses control of their wheel and crashes into the car that swerved in front of me. I called the cops and waited at the gas station for them to come. Turns out the drivers of both cars died. It 100% would have been me if I hadn't gotten that phone call. Called it back a few hours later out of gratitude and curiosity. Rang three times and went to voicemail. Quote, Hi, you've reached Aurora. Please leave your name and number. Oh my god, I literally just got chills. I do too. 
Never had goosebumps like that in my life. Called it again the next day because I was that confused about the whole situation. Some woman answers. We get to talking. I tell her my entire story, including the dreams I had. She tells me she doesn't know how I got her number and that she never called me as far as she remembers. Weird. I'm literally going to poop my pants. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I need a blanket because oh now I feel God. cold. Oh, chilly. Uh, I ask her if she has a Facebook to confirm if she is, in fact, the woman in my dreams. Check her Facebook. Holy fuck, it's her. <gasps> I'm if, literally a ball of chills right now. I know. <laughs> if that's not a glitch of the Matrix, then I'm just batshit crazy. No, for real. I would be like, am I okay? I would literally, yeah, I'd be concerned um oh my god that's the kind of thing that makes for my menti health get into a fucking spiral yeah aurora yeah. absolutely insane i'm like my tummy feels fine i'm scared <laughs> oh, my, oh god. my goodness that is absolutely horrifying peanut oh uh, i've heard so many of those ones where it's like a near death yeah. experience or it's like oh my god yeah. that 100 percent would have been me well and it also makes me think of like the alternate reality theory i can't remember what it's called but it's like parallel universe parallel universe like maybe she did die and then like yeah ended yeah, up, yeah like shifting to a different reality but peanut <laughs> peanut <laughs> sorry peanut wanted to tell her own her own story but <laughs> she just had to go outside for a little <laughs> But yeah, that um that was one of the first ones I think that I saw and I was like strong. Seriously. Oh my god. Okay, well this is very not exciting compared to that and it's very short, but (laughs) I thought it was like a good introduction for like a mundane glitch in the matrix. Yeah. Also for some reason instead of just copy and pasting like the whole entry, I like paraphrased it, so uh, okay, so this person goes to the grocery store and picks out a nice bunch of bananas. By the way, this is Reddit user Chava Yala. <laughs> All right. Um. Anyway, uh, <laughs> she specifically chooses a very ripe and yellow bunch. And once again, when she's unloading her car, she notes the yellow color of the nanners. Mm-hmm. Yellow nanners. When she gets inside and she's putting her groceries away, she turns around and sees them and they're fucking green. Just completely... Time traveling Completely. Uh, and like all the comments underneath it were like, you know, asking all the questions you should ask. Like, what kind of lighting was in the grocery store? Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. She's like, listen, I'm a 50-something-year-old woman. I've seen a lot of bananas, and I've bought a lot of bananas in my day. She's like, listen, I know my bananas, kid. (laughs) So I thought that was kind of a goofy, um, lighthearted one, but still, I would feel crazy if that happened to me. I would have been like, oh, what the hell is happening? Yeah. (laughs) You ever have something small like that happen to you where you're like, um, what? I have a lot of, like... And this is the only reason why it makes me not feel crazy is because I have ADHD and I misplace things a lot. Yeah. But like there's things that'll just straight up disappear out of existence. And I'm like, I have a small apartment. Like there's not that many places where things can go. And then it'll reappear way down the line. And I'm like, okay. And like plain as day. Yeah. In the spot where I've already looked or whatever. And it's like. Yeah. Uh, so I've like torn things apart sometimes to yes. like try and find something and then it ends up right in the middle of There's been times where when I've I looked. am like so frustrated. I've lost track of something and I'm like, I know I put it here or whatever. Like I know it's somewhere around here. And then I'll just think to myself, it's going to show back up. Yeah. And I hate that. You ever <laughs> ask the house? Yes. I ask my house. I, I try. I want to pay attention to my house more often and like honor it more and be I'm like a little oh, man, out thanks by my for house. protecting me and shit but i swear sometimes like sometimes it's the house <laughs> i was gonna say the house slurps that shit up yeah yeah or um, whatever I'll, like, hug the wall. whatever um, i'll be like can you please help entities me find this? are huh? in the house yeah somebody's messing around with you i know just 
Like, <laughs> this would be funny. <laughs> yeah, I get creeped out in my house. Um, well, I, I live in a duplex in like a, you know, upper level, lower le- level. They're not side by side. And I know there's been at least one person that's died there. Um, One person oh. that has died there since I've been living there. Oh, my God. So I always overthink it and I'm like... Uh, the ghosts are trying to communicate with me. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. Yeah, no, I ask the house sometimes, and then it'll show up. I'm like, oh, thanks, thanks, man. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, the next one I have is from Reddit user <laughs> Kill All Extremists. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it was it was a good one. So, the parallel universe answering machine. Oh God! This happened about fifteen years ago. I called my friend up and he wasn't home, so I left a message on his answering machine. I said, "Hey, it's me. Sorry I missed you. Call you back later. Bye." And then I hung up and left the house. I made no other calls. Later that day, he called back and he says, "Wow, that was quite a message you left." Who is the girl you were talking to? I was like, mm, what are you talking about? I wasn't talking to any girl. Well, as it turns out, the message didn't end after I said bye. I had to get over to his house and listen to the message a few times. After my initial message that I did leave, as quoted above, there was a slight pause and it continues on for another 30 or 40 seconds or so with me talking to some girl. What the fuck? I just got chills again. It was my voice, but a conversation Mm -hmm. I never had with a girl whose voice I didn't recognize. I'm going to (laughs) barf right on myself right now. Oh my god. My eyes are tearing up. (laughs) You could compare it to the message I know I did leave, and the two voices were indistinguishable. Not just the voice, but, you know, talking mannerisms. It was my voice. Also, references to my occupation and activities were the same. Basically, in this conversation, I was talking to this girl about going skiing, but I had to go down to my shop and work on a car first, which totally correlated to me. Then the message just stopped. It was recorded on one of those digital answering machines that recorded the message to a chip, so there was no tape I could have taken and had analyzed, unfortunately. Also, neither I nor my friend had party lines, so that's not an explanation. It was very freaky. I can't explain it. That is... I can't handle that. <laughs> my Dude, tummy what hurts. what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Could I'm you imagine? Okay. Like, I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to go sleep forever because I can't handle that. Well, that's terrifying. Well, one, that like, you know... What you said, you know you left a message, you also know that you were alone. And then to hear a, a, a voicemail or a message that is exactly your voice talking your to voice. somebody you have never met, that you were never with, saying shit that correlates to your actual life? There is literally no explanation for that other than like this guy having like dementia or something, which does not seem... Yeah, it's like, did you leave out the part where you were, like, hammered or, like, what's going on? It's very, (sighs) very weird. I also love the friend being like, so, that was fucking weird. Yeah, he's like, that was a weird message. Who were you talking to? I would have been like, who, what? I was like, oh, it's terrifying. Oh, my God. That reminds me of a TikTok I saw that was very creepy of this lady saying that, like, she knows, like, her and her boyfriend have known that they live in a house that's, like, haunted or there are spirits there, but they're typically, like, they're not dangerous or anything like that. But her seeing, like, her boyfriend walk past the doorway or whatever, um, and him... Never having left? Left the living room or something at that moment, but she sees him walk by or vice versa. Uh-uh. That's terrifying. That is so scary. Like, and him being like, oh, you you told me this earlier. Like, walking into a room, talking to his girlfriend, 
And then I'm so scared of doppelganger things. Yeah. And then talking to her again later about the conversation she had and okay. she was like, what? I'm sick. Like, I was not even in that room. Like, ooh. The amount of stories I've heard where it's like, I was talking to my wife and then I realized it wasn't my wife. I'm like, I'm literally going to sob. The doppelganger shit. Like, it's, uh, it feels so sinister. It is terrifying. Like, why? Why? What's the need? And like, I don't know. I just try and convince myself it's just a weird parallel timeline that like slipped up or something because that, like, that's less scary than like for a second some weird god i don't even know yeah i hate that <sighs> okay this is a painting glitch from reddit user strange winged things love so this person <laughs> is painting in their little studio painting some abstract vibes on a canvas, they decided to paint a red block. So they mixed the color, taped off the section that they wanted to paint, and filled it in. They turned around to look at a painting on the wall behind them for about 30 seconds. When they turned back around, the spot that they had painted wasn't painted, but the remains of the paint they had mixed for it was in the palette. What? Excuse. No, that's something that I would be like, do I have, like, short-term memory issues? Well, like, and, like, or... if the paint was just mixed and ready to go, that would be one thing, but it was, like, just the little bits that were left. Oh, just the remnants of the paint? Yeah, it was, like, the little, you know, with, oh. like, paint marks in it. Paint brush marks. What the yeah. fuck? That... Okay. I'm assuming they were kind of uh, just, like, waiting for it to dry a little bit or whatever. Like, I've done a lot of painting. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the vibe. You're just, like, paint this and then wait for a minute. But even, like, turning around for 30 seconds, like, that's not a super long time. No. And then, like, you know, a canvas, obviously, is not red. And, like, you know that you painted a red block. To do all the, the prep, too, and, like, tape it up and, like... Was it's the not just like completely blank. A, there was other stuff on the canvas already, but yeah, that just creeped me out. I was like, that is mm, so weird. I do not like that whatsoever. I mean, I feel like there have definitely been times where I think that I've done something and then I'm like, oh, I could have sworn that I texted this person or that I did that or whatever, but it's never been something like that, you know? Yeah. Where it's like, obviously there's evidence that you did, but... Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, there could definitely be an explanation for this or like missing information that they didn't put in there. Yeah. But if you take it at face value, mm -hmm. I'm not into that. Okay. I think I remember... Oh, yeah, this one is creepy as fuck, dude. You're going to puke. I'm okay. not ready. This one is from Reddit user Mark of Shame. <laughs> Driving home on a stormy day, I see that a side road up to the local golf course is blocked off by flashing barricades. I also spy a Mercedes parked past the barricades with its hazards on. I stop and walk up to the car to see if they need any help. I'm an EMT, in parentheses. I shine my light in the back seat to see a man slumped over, apparently asleep. Thinking I've got a few drunks, I move to the driver window and rap on the glass and shine my light in. The driver is sitting bolt upright, unmoving, staring straight ahead. My window wrapping or light doesn't cause him to blink, flinch, or move. I look over and the passenger is slumped forward onto the dash. This begins to creep me out. I call down to the sheriff's station and request a code 2, no lights slash sirens, unit up to my location to help me check them out. The doors are locked. While on the phone, I walk back to my truck to get my go bag. As I'm on the phone with dispatch, she asks me to get a license number for the car just as a PG&E power company cherry picker truck comes rumbling down from up the closed road. I move to go around the truck to get the plate number and the car is gone. Mm, ah, it's happening again. I talked to the driver of the truck, and he said there was an 80-foot tree down across the road, 
and that he didn't think it'd be open for a day or day or so. So <laughs> <laughs> open for a day or so. So the question is, the hell did the car go? Tree up one way, barricades down the other. It's kept me a bit unsettled when stopping at accidents slash hazards since then. Um, honestly, what the fuck? What the fuck? Could you imagine? I don't want to. Um, that's terrifying. Just like driving in a storm, you see a car with hazards on, you're like, oh my god, is this person okay? Like off the side of the road. And seeing the passenger slumped forward on the da- on the dash. And the other person. And the driver bolt upright, staring, unblinking, <laughs> unmoving forward. Um, that's terrifying. And then the shit just, bye. And like, it's doesn't say that there's any like damage to the mercedes or anything whereas like i feel like it would make sense if something an accident had happened or something crazy or traumatic or whatever happened and maybe the passenger was like yeah incapacitated and the driver was in shock yeah, I was going to say, those two things are not necessarily, like, like, like any circumstances wouldn't explain but them. Then but then the car like, literally disappears in the course of, like, a, a minute. Like, ugh. not hearing it move, not anything, like, not no, seeing it down the road. For someone to come help you out or whatever, like, that is so eerie. It is eerie as fuck, and that would be really unsettling. For me, it's like really weird like, alien vibes. Like something. I was just listening strange. to an alien abduction story. So. Oh yeah, you were. Those are fun. I've got that on the brain. I yeah. hate it. Well, it does sound like something like that. Honestly, like it sounds like they saw something. The other thing I would say was they um, were drug use. Yeah. But then yeah. that doesn't give an explanation for why the car disappears. Yeah. In my mind. I think of like decoys for what? I need I you don't to know. She just <laughs> raised her hand up. She was like, talk to the fucking hand. Shut I up. Uh, um, I wanna throw up. Decoys for who and what I can't I can't say, but like I think just for it to disappear. Oh, oh the stormy vibes. I don't Ugh. like it. I don't like Hell it. Hell no. <sighs> okay, my two um Longer ones slash really actually creepy ones are... Basically, I'm going to do one less exciting one, and I'm going to save those other two for my last yeah. zingers. All right. This is from Reddit user PJzer Laser. <laughs> um, this person works at Walmart, or they did at the time, um, pulling pallets. This is what he was doing on this particular night. He pulls all the pallets he needs, finishes up, and he's feeling toasty afterwards. So he takes his hoodie off and his knife falls from the front pocket of the hoodie. He thinks to himself, can't use this knife if it's in my hoodie. So he puts it in the front pocket of his pants. He finishes doing whatever he needs to do, walks several steps to go grab his pallet jack and slings his hoodie over his shoulder. Another knife falls out and he's like, oh, must have brought two knives to work today. Mm. No big deal. And goes to put that knife in the same pocket with the other knife, except there's no knife in his pocket at all. So the knife just teleported from his pocket? It just teleported back into the hoodie to fall out again. Another pretty mundane one, but I was like... Time slip? Like... Exactly. uh... It's like those little ones almost creep me out. Uh, Not more, but like... But in a different way, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Because it's like, what? Because it's what could so... have happened for that to be? I feel like it's so much easier to be like, oh, I'm just bonkers. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I must have not put it in my pocket. Like I thought I did. But yeah, like, oh, this <laughs> this old job is the same every day. <laughs> you know, yeah. kind of vibe. Um, but no. But I mean, the, I feel like that sort of shit has definitely happened to me too, though. That's what I was um, gonna say. That's the kind like... of stuff I've experienced. Which I'd rather experience that kind of glitch than than finding a random person in a car than <laughs> fucking Aurora. <gasps> That's gonna haunt me forever. Oh, <sighs> anyway. <laughs> so my next one is from Reddit user Parrot Tamer. <laughs> Love. 
At 12 years of age, my mom let me stay in the truck as she went grocery shopping. As I wait, I see an old guy walking towards the truck with an indescribable look at me as if I know too much. He stops five feet from the truck, looks at me for a couple seconds, and then heads back the exact same way he came. It was rather traumatic for some reason, and very confusing at that age. Five to six years later, my dad was showing me some home videos of us at Yellowstone. At Old Faithful, I noticed the same guy. Same look, same clothes, uh, peering at us on uh, camera and at me through the TV. I am freaked out just retelling this. I have, I have chills. In my fucking eyes. I have chills all the way down my arms. I'm like, oh, I keep getting spine chills and I keep starting to cry. <laughs> I'm like, that one gave me the oh most. Oh my god, no. Uh, no! I, yeah. Edit. I didn't expect this this story to be such a hit. A few more details. The Yellowstone video was from I was was from when I was very young. I'm thinking one or two years of age. I was in an awesome baby pack on my dad's back. Also, I'll try my hardest to find the video. I don't see my parents often. Blah blah blah. Um, if I do, I'll post the video. Message you all. And then there's a comment um, that says, it's you from the future. <laughs> it reminds me of the episode of a You from Girl, the Future where is Nick meets creepy. his future self. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, oh I'm God. actually... That is so gross. That creeps me out so badly. I might projectile like, vomit. I on, actually want to throw onto up. Onto you, like... We can throw up on each other. Um, oh, God. That's so nasty. And, like, so fucking you said creepy. 12 like, years of age was the first He was the 12. A guy walks up to him and, while he's sitting in a truck, stares at him, then no. walks away, and then you look at family videos and photos from when you were an infant, and you see the same exact man staring at you in the same exact clothes? I literally am speechless. I don't know what to say. There's like a helicopter or something outside. <clears throat> that is not pearl farting. No. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> or is it? Okay, well that's um, fucking nasty. That's nauseating, pissing, shitting, throwing up, crying. I'm having a really creepy image in my head too. Like, I just pictured that whole thing uh, too much. Don't. Are we gonna be able to I sleep I feel like I all? would always just be worried of, about seeing that guy. Yeah. I would literally... It does give me weird time travel vibes I'm for some reason. I'm not going to sleep. It's disgusting. Okay. Time <laughs> compression glitch by Reddit user Lord-Kirk. <laughs> Okay, so this person regularly gets off of work at 5 p.m. And since this is rush hour, their drive back home takes about an hour and 15 minutes. What? I'm going to have to cut that. I'm going to have to cut that because you, you, just the way you said that, this person gets off. <laughs> no, of work. don't cut it. <laughs> this person gets off regularly at 5 p.m. <laughs> don't we all? Um, yeah, time of day. <laughs> I feel like off. when I was typing that, I was like, I'm gonna fix that later so it doesn't sound so suggestive, and then I never did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so because of the rush hour traffic, their drive back home usually takes about an hour and 15 minutes. Ugh. This means they would almost always get home at around 6.15. Which, by the way, fuck that drive. That sucks. I've I've worked that schedule before. It's the worst. Um. So their routine driving home was to call their partner, catch up, and see if she wanted anything from the store. On this particular evening, after about 10 minutes of driving, they hang up on the phone call. And since their partner did want something from the store, this person's like, all right, I drive this route every fucking day. I know I'm about to pull up on that store. Don't. I'm so grossed out. Don't. Um, basically, they're like, I'm about to round the corner to this place. Rounding the corner, they find themselves 
back home huh? on their street and they huh? pull up. It's 5.20. <gasps> their partner was basically is like, day? is this some weird prank? Like It's you the same ju- day. Yeah. I just got off the phone with you. Like, you didn't tell me you left early. What? So the person who's like confused as hell, obviously <laughs> calls their business partner and was like, did we leave early? And they're like, no, we left at the regular time. Later on, they look up CCTV footage and see that he left work at 5.04. And the last email that they sent at work was at 4.42 p.m. Uh No explanation whatsoever. What the fuck? Just like, I don't even think the drive, like the drive wouldn't have even been able to take 20 minutes without rush hour traffic. No. Well, and like he called, when he called the partner, his business partner or whatever, that person was still on the road, like driving home and they had a shorter (gasps) drive back home than Uh, What happened? I know. I don't understand and I mean, like, how that can even happen. We if it like, was later associated the... on the drive home and been like, "Oh, I'm home," yeah, but not uh, losing time. Well, if it was later in the day too, then it could definitely have been just like, "Oh, I lost this time," or I like it dissociated. And but for it to be five twenty, for it to have taken fifteen minutes to get home when it should have they... taken an hour and fifteen minutes. And, like, uh, they, what was this? Yeah, this person had done this drive every day for nine years. Oh, my God. I would be, like, so fucking freaked out. Dude. Like, I'm getting a new job. There had to be, like, some sort of portal or something. Or the universe was, like, this curve is now this curve because the store's gonna blow up today or something. Like, (laughs) like they said they were, like, checking the time on everything, being, like, yeah what is going on and just their partner being like what they literally like slipped through space Ugh, it would freak me out that would haunt me forever because i'd be like how how is this possible how um literally how this one is probably gonna make both both of us puke (laughs) because oh good um it's shorter but it's creepy this one is from reddit user cat seven i think there are about seven or eight t's in cat okay cat (laughs) seven somebody whispered my name in my ear on an empty train car oh i saw this one did you i did i don't remember the rest of it not sure if this is the right sub for this but this happened to me a few months ago and i still think about it really frequently I was on the subway coming home from work. It was later because I had a work dinner, so the subway wasn't crowded at all. I was just standing against the wall, nobody behind me, and I'm dead sober. Haven't had a drink all day, nothing. All of a sudden, I hear in such a clear whisper, Hey, cat, right in my ear, like someone was standing behind me trying to tell me a secret. Um, I'm... Uh... I jumped, turned around fully expecting someone to know, someone I know to maybe be behind me, even though I know the wall is there. Nobody there, not even anyone in the car with me. I can't explain it, and it honestly sounded like my voice, which makes it weirder. Dude, absolutely not. Have you ever experienced something like that before? Like hearing somebody audibly clear as day like hearing a voice i don't know i don't think so where what's that called because i know there's like clairvoyance which is audience audience or something like that i think so i think that's what it's called um i'm like if you're spiritual or believe witchy yeah witchy or anything like that um maybe this was Either she was just tired as hell and something happened and her brain tried to make it make sense. Or it could have been somebody whispering her name. Yep. Um, I, that's happened to me before. <laughs> um, that's so fucking creepy. Yeah. When you don't have any context for it or like... 
Uh-huh. You're not used to that. I mean, it doesn't seem like something this person was used to happening. Well, yeah, and I don't think that a lot of people probably are used to it, even if they're, I don't know, if people are like, if you're a witch and you're a professional or you like do these things, you're psychic, you're probably used to it, but it could still take you by surprise. Um, it's... Happened I've just to heard me maybe so many once or twice. People and people talk about, oh, yeah, you know, I hear shit all the time. It, it's normal to me. I feel like yeah. they probably would have said something to give a little bit more context. If have that you, was... So you've never, like, thought you heard, like, someone calling your name? Well, that's why I paused, because I was like, I definitely feel like I've had a lot of questioning moments. Yeah. But yeah. kind of to where I've just been like, like i'm gonna Meh. put that out of my brain yeah. for the moment or whatever um yeah. no but it's happened to me before and it was like a full full couple sentences i was like what the fuck That's um so creepy and that i was like think i hear end. shit a lot and i can never yeah. tell if it's like well spiritual or if i'm just off yeah. my rocker yeah well definitely sometimes i think it's like when you're tired or something you can hear something and your brain tries to make sense of it or see something and your brain tries to make sense of it um especially if it's something that freaks you out mm-hmm. because your brain's gonna be like there has to be an explanation, A logical explanation like, right. to protect me from this or whatever um but yeah and i also feel like i don't know <clears throat> do you think in words or pictures both like as in do you see words or do you oh. see pic do you think in pictures I and don't you see can words. hear your like voice like you think in your head yeah okay i'm the same way and i feel like there's a huge difference between like being conscious of my own thoughts and like what is being said or whatever versus audibly hearing something that's outside of your voice or outside right. of your body um and it's very creepy but yeah like, in the instance that it happened to me, it was during a time where I was really, really struggling. It was, like, right towards the end of, um, like, being or considering myself a Christian. Mm, like, I had, do not, it. I had not been a Christian for a long, long time. But I still was, like, going to church or, like, not my able to detach community. Yourself. Yeah, my friends and stuff were mostly there. Um, so I still, like, went and stuff. But I... I hadn't been a christian for a long time but it was it was really towards the end of that and like finally being able to detach um and it was a very difficult time like for me and when i was struggling a lot like one of the times i was struggling a lot like with my identity Mm -hmm. um my gender identity and just like my place in my family and like everything like that um and so when it happened it was actually something that was like really really encouraging like comforting like something i needed to hear huh from someone that's crazy that wasn't myself damn and it honestly like it was a really tough night i was in bed trying to go to sleep like crying and <laughs> and i couldn't go to bed and like immediately after I fell asleep. Oh my god, dude. That's kind of cool. It was kind of cool. Like, thankfully, it wasn't a creepy thing uh, in that moment. Like, it could have been, but your brain didn't take it that way. My spirit or whatever needed to hear whatever, whatever this entity or the universe, whatever, needed to say. Uh, But yeah, that was a very interesting thing. I think I would have reacted differently than a different situation, obviously, but right i i didn't have time to react a whole lot either you were like like honk shoe you know when you're meditating or something like you can feel the point um or when you're trying to be really conscious of your body and like all the parts of it and like relax mm-hmm. you can feel the point of like when your body is relaxed mm-hmm. it was like a release and i fell asleep so crazy what the fuck <sighs> yeah <laughs> yeah anyway <laughs> Yeah, it was a really interesting thing that happened. Wow. But um, if I was, if I just heard someone say, hey, Morgan, I'd be like, hey, the fuck you want? Literally, <laughs> um, what the fuck is up? 
What the fuck is up, Kyle? Oh, God. Especially if I'm, like, by myself yeah. at home or something. And I'm like, how do I process this? Yeah. All right. This is called Moon Glitch by Reddit user Nova Kane. Have I seen it? I might have seen this one. Nova Kane. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so she's out in the garden weeding and getting things ready and prepped to plant the next day. Just kind of enjoying the evening, vibing out. They sit down to have a drink of water and decide that they're going to head down the hill to a little fort they have down at the bottom with like a wildflower patch and stuff. So they've got like a little area down there. As they're heading down, they look up at the sky and see a big, fat, round, glowing moon. They're like, oh, wow. Hi, goddess. Must have been a full moon, and I didn't realize it. So they go hang out their little fort for a little bit and text their mom about how bright the moon is. After a little bit, they go back up to the house and decide to check their moon phase app to see what the moon actually was that night. You know how sometimes it's like, you think it's a full moon and it's only at like 89% illumination or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, she checks it and it says the moon is a waning crescent with only 10% illumination. What the fuck? Googles it. What? Same thing. Goes back outside to look at it and there's no more full moon. Just the setting sun. So the sun was setting, and she also simultaneously saw this giant, bitch-ass, thick moon. Thick, glowing, bright, Goddess. in your face. And she just did a drive-by. <laughs> She's like, just kidding. Literally, kidding. she was like, I'll be back. Just kidding. Um, um, but the fact that it was only 10% illumination... What did you see, Like, my that friend? is highly different, my guy. What did you see, my friend? Oh, God, that would... <sighs> no. It's gonna be a no from me. I le legit don't even know what sort of explanation that could have had. No. Other than, like, you're just... UFO. <laughs> right above you or whatever. Right? Or, like, just some weird time slip again? Yeah. Where you, like, slipped into a later yeah. part of the evening or something? <laughs> <laughs> Slipped into a later into the evening, evening glow, but this, but the lighting outside still was like sunset or day or whatever. Yeah, I don't want to know what you saw. I don't think it was the moon, though. Yeah. Um. No thanks. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay, so that was your last, that was my one? last one. Okay, I have one more. I'm ready. This is from Reddit user Crow Horse. <laughs> um i think i called myself <laughs> uh, no i've been reading the stories on this subreddit and have enjoyed them so i thought i'd share my own weird story with you guys it happened in early 2000 when i was working at a juvenile detention center in a small town in oklahoma as a corrections officer i was working nights at the time and went to work at 9 p.m this one night I arrived for work, my supervisor looked confused and asked me what I was doing there. I said, I work tonight. And he said, but they said you called in a few hours ago saying that you were sick. I was a bit confused and said, it must have been someone else and they got the message wrong. After everyone else showed up for work that night, it was a bit more weird. But we carried on as usual and assigned everyone their places for the night. I went to work in the control room where I usually work. The control room is the center of the prison that has direct control over the cameras, doors, phones, and everything. After I relieved the guard on duty and settled in for the night, I looked up the message that said I called in. It said that I had called at 6.50 and said that I had gotten sick while out cleaning up after the storm. There had been a storm the night before and it was a bit bad, but not anything I would have had to go out to clean up. It was truly weird. Fuck. The super... <laughs> Yeah. The supervisor came into this control about that time. He was also a friend of mine outside work, and we started talking about it and how odd it was. I decided to call my wife at home and tell her about it while he was still sitting there. I picked up the phone and dialed. After two rings, a man picked up the phone and with a raspy voice said, Hello? 
I did not know what to say for a few seconds. I looked at the phone to make sure I dialed the right number, and I had. After a few seconds, the person said hello again in the same raspy voice. I said, hello, who is this? This is Taylor, who is this? The person said. My head started spinning because my name is also Taylor. I said in almost a scream, where is Anne? He said, Anne's in bed. Who is this? I dropped the phone and told my supervisor to ring me out. I had to get home and I took off towards the front door. I could hear Dave pick up the phone behind me and say hello, followed soon after by what the fuck rather loudly. Oh my god. I ran to my car and drove home faster than what was legal, my mind racing the entire time. I busted through the door and my wife was sitting watching TV and was shocked at me being home. I asked her who was there and she said no one had been there. After a rather long talk with my wife, I went to call the prison to tell them what was going on, but the phone was dead. I went back to work, and when I came in, Dave was acting weird and asked me, how the hell are you doing this? He Dave told, is like, listen, boy. <laughs> Dave was like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> you are possessed, son. He told me that when I left, he picked up the phone and the person on the other end sounded like me. He kind of freaked out and hung up the phone. (laughs) A minute later, as he could see my car leaving the parking lot, I had called back from home and asked what the fuck was going on. He said that I was a bit irate and said I was sick and did not feel like playing these games and was telling him to stop prank calling me and hung up. After convincing him I had no idea what was going on, we went back to work. Later, I found out that the phone line for my area had been knocked down the night before the storm. This is absolutely the strangest thing that has ever happened to me. I have chills. I've literally been one big chill this entire time. Oh, dude, what the fuck? And like for him to be talking to this whoever on the phone while this guy's like Dave on the phone. While you're watching him drive down the road, and you're talking to him, and he's at home saying he's sick. It sounds like him. And it, yeah. But I'm, so when he hears the guy, he's like, it's a raspy sounding guy, and it doesn't sound like him? Or does it sound like him? It does sound like him, but he's sick. Oh my god, bro. And, uh, it's so weird. Anne's in bed? And Anne's in bed. Ugh. And then when he gets home, his wife is not in bed. Nobody had been there. And the phones to the house weren't even working since the night before. I'm shocked. I'm in shock. I... Like, you just I know, you just be like, oh, okay, well, let's let's just get back to work. I'd be like, oh, I need to go see a specialist. I'm going home and I'm going to cry. I'm going home. And I'm moving towns. I'm going to hold my wife. That is so strange. Um, Another one where I'm like, is that a weird timeline change? Like, is this an older version of you? It feels like, yeah, it could be that, or it could just be like somehow overlap, like you called your alternate reality self, but then they also were able to call you back multiple times. And it's the correct phone number, it is his wife's name, his own name, it is his voice, like... And other people hearing it too, like, that's Yeah, and then somebody else also, like, the fact that he was talking to him on the phone while he was driving away. Yeah, that is bonkers. Bananas, one might say. It is so, so weird. Literally don't have any sort of... I just really hope nothing like this ever happens to me because I would not know what to do with myself. So, like, no other, like, significant glitch in the Matrix has happened to you? Um, I'm trying to think of anything 
like memorable has happened. I just feel like it's been a lot of situations where I lose something. Yeah. And then it reappears yeah. where I already fucking looked and like yeah. there's no logical explanation. Me too. That's so weird. Like I kind of wish something weird happened to me like that. <laughs> I want something mildly weird. Yeah. To happen to me. Yeah. Maybe it will now. <laughs> uh are we manifesting that? That's another thing. I don't know what they call it, but there's like a term for when enough people believe in something. Like that one thing it, will happen. Where it manifests itself. Yeah. Those kind of things. Yeah. Like you're all putting out this certain type of energy, so it's manifested. I mean, it's just like literally anything can fucking happen. Yeah. It's... Very, very strange. It's like the universe being like, oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Well, I'm going to be haunted by every single one of those. Good, good. I'm going to bring my A game next time. Those were good. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll do more um, Glitch in the Matrix stories in the future because that was really fun. I yeah. hate they're spooky. And... I love the spooky. Ah. Uh, very, very enjoyable, at least for us. Hope it was enjoyable for you, too. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you for enjoying these stories with us today. We hope you <laughs> liked it. <laughs> Have a spooky, scary day in only the best way. Uh, that was beautiful um anyway rhyme <laughs> if you want to check us out on social media you can find us at rats rants and rabbit trails pod i always forget the pod um <laughs> i mean if you look up rants and rabbit trails you'll find us you'll even find if us. we're not giving you the right thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah check it out if you want i guess um or don't i'm not your fucking mom have a good day girl bye <laughs> girl bye <laughs> I heard, I was listening to a podcast earlier, and I was like, new dream sponsor. They were sponsored by Skyrim. What? I, like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh my god. Somehow it's recording again. <laughs>